bunch of crunch army. Where are you at? It's your motivation guy, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. So you want to become a Fortnite legend. You have dreams of being on the leaderboards and, you know, fighting for a slice of that prize pool where well, there's something that you need to know. Mechanics aren't what's going to take you there. Proper decision making is. I mean, yeah, I mean, you need to train your mechanics too, guys. But once you start reaching higher levels of play, you know, sound decisions are what's going to allow you to get more kills and live for longer. And that's what the video is about, making better decisions in Fortnite. So we're going to start by going over a few of the in-game decisions that I know a lot of us struggle with. And then we're going to look at some pros, you know, and then delve into the decision making process and just see, you know, why they make the choices they do. But when it comes to game IQ, our pro coaches live and breathe Fortnite, man. One session and these game sense geniuses can tell you what you're doing wrong so you can get better. So don't take your sweet time. Get some help straight from the best and start improving today. Link is in the description. By listening to the intro, you probably know by now just how important making the right decisions in competitive Fortnite is, right? Sure, in casual or lower levels of gameplay, having insane mechanics can be enough to carry you to victory. But once you begin to climb, whew, or get into tournaments where everyone has a decent, you know, good amount of mechanics, your choices start to carry more weight. Now, there are close to a billion different decisions that you can make in Fortnite. But the two areas that I see you guys ask about all the time, especially on my Insta, is A, fighting, such as, you know, when to engage a fight, and B, rotation. So, let's talk about what you need to consider. You guys ready? Here we go. For fights, here's a checklist that you can use to help your decision, all right? First off, where's the safe zone? If it's far, getting into a fight could lead to things like taking storm damage. But if the zone is only a short run away, then getting into a fight becomes a much safer option. Second, how's your positioning? Are you on high ground? If not, you got to worry about the disadvantage you'll be in when you engage. And also, has your opponent spotted you? Your opponent knowing your position is really significant when it comes to getting off opening damage. And if you're 150 meters away, going for rifle shots won't really do much. So distance matters too. Third, your inventory. This matters significantly more in early game fights, even in the mid game. Like ask yourself this, do I have full shields? Are my weapons good? What about mats and items to help me get into boxes like crash pads or shockwaves? If your loadout is lousy compared to how it typically is, try not to take fights <laughs> but if you're ahead with the purple pump and full shield right off the bat then you shouldn't feel any doubts about your loadout holding you back and fourth what is the potential for a third party being the one to initiate a fight can really backfire if there's a third party nearby so you really need to consider this before taking a fight especially during the mid game where enemy positions aren't really well known so think about where players are rotating through and how might they get you know to your position with rifts, cars, and you know more in the end game now, the potential for mid game third parties has increased. So you really shouldn't just engage unless you need something like mats or mobility, or you know you're just feeling really confident about the fight. Okay, let's take a look at an example of Mr. Savage's trio and how they approach their decision making in fights. You guys ready? Here we go. The fight starts with our trio dealing big damage to the trio in front of them. A fantastic opening already. Now they need to decide whether it's worth continuing the fight. Let's go through the checklist. The safe zone. It's near to the north and it's only a one tick so they shouldn't have a problem rotating in positioning they're on equal level and the enemies are all boxed up trying to heal so they have the positional advantage they need loadout wise yeah they've got shields full health and an ample amount of mass to go fight with and when it comes to third parties the chances are high considering they're fighting right under starks and you know right next to the authority but with the damage they've dealt and all the other factors it's a fight worth continuing so they commit to this fight but right winning it another trio swoops in and with a few different factors, like the zone moving in and the lack of materials, they need to be a lot more careful. If they stay in fight, they risk being eliminated. Or they'll win the fight, take storm damage, run out of mats, and lose valuable positioning. So, instead of fighting, they play it defensively, grab the loot they can, and disengage. Okay, so that's it for fights right now. Let's look at rotations, which are pretty complicated to talk about. But before you start auto-running into the next zone, right, you should ask yourself three things. Where, when, and how? Where? Like, as in, where do you want to rotate to in the zone? Generally, setting up around the center of zones two and three will give you the highest chance of being favored for the next one, which means fewer rotations and fewer encounters. 
However, more and more players are following this rule, especially in stacked lobbies, which makes it less viable. That's when you should consider the alternate strategy of rotating toward the dead side of the zone. But for Arena, I would really would focus on just playing around the center of those two zones and then playing the edge of zones four and onward, all right? So what about when to rotate? Well, for the first circle, it only really matters if you've got a really far zone on the other side of the map. That's when you maybe want to rotate a minute earlier just so you can just avoid other last minute rotators. But otherwise, you're going to be fine as long as you can get in on time. For zones two and three, again, they usually don't matter, but for in-game zones, quick rotates tend to have the best results as long as the coast is clear. So there are certain situations where late rotations work better, like if you have mobility or you're being held. But generally, the faster you rotate, the quicker you can just set up and just start looking for limbs. And lastly, how do you want to rotate? So this is pretty much deciding whether you're going to use mobility or just hold onto it for later. In stacked lobbies, a group rule of thumb, guys, is just to wait until the fifth zone before using mobility. Some players will even hold on to their mobility for the sixth zone and onward, which is fine. That's just where you get the most use out of it, right? Especially for taking high ground. But when in doubt, just use your mobility. There's really no point in holding onto shockwaves or bouncers until you're deaf, and you're just much better off just using what you got. Rotations are just like a really in-depth topic to really get into, which we unfortunately don't have the time for right now. But for more info, you can always check out our latest mobility guide, which is awesome, which goes over many of the rotation tactics that you can use, all right? And you can also save time by using our VOD review service to get instant feedback on your rotations, guys, your fights, or really whatever you're struggling with, straight from a pro coach. So you gotta try it out, and the link is down below. Okay, so now that we've gone over some of the typical decisions we'll have to make, how do we actually improve our decision making? Well, all right, there are multiple ways, but the simplest is to run through the decision making process. So to do that, all right, let's take a look at EU solo FNCS winner E11 Tayson. So for step one in the decision making process, you need to identify the problem. Like whatever it may be, you need to understand the issue that we're deciding on and the implications that come from making a wrong decision. For Tayson, it's the mid game and he's decided that he wants the W key, but only against players in situations where he can really control the fight. For step two, all right, you need to gather relevant information. So Tayson has likely checked his mats, his position relative to the zone, and how much time he has. He also assessed the risk of potential third party and knows that he has an advantage since he can just glide here to just break his enemy builds. Step three, has you develop and evaluate alternatives. Come up with a few options, then just spend some time evaluating them so you can just pick what seems best. In Tayson situations, you know, like nothing immediately jumps out as a reason to not W key. He's in a favorable position with low to moderate risk. If he chooses not to fight here, sure, I mean, he could just rotate out, but in the long run, he risks going into the end game with zero mobility items. And that's one of the alternatives Tayson has thought of. He doesn't want to go into the end game with no mobility. So he'd just rather take this fight while it's still early enough to do so. All right, but step four, guys, is when you need to make a decision. Pick whichever ones, you know, make the most sense and just try to be confident with it. Don't flip flop your decision making. Sometimes you can just second guess yourself, but it's always better not to, okay? Tayson could have just flown away at any moment, but instead he stayed committed to the fight because he was confident in his abilities. Finally, guys, for step five, you need to review the decision. Best done once you're done playing, you know, either hop into the VOD or just, you know, go over the motions in your head and just carefully analyze the choice you made. If it worked, good job. But, you know, if you made a mistake, that's when you need to go back and just start at step one. In Tayson's case, his decision worked out. He won the fight, he got some crash pads, you know, he did it just in time, and, you know, he went on to snag the victory royale. So in summary, like you can use this five-step process anytime you're feeling like your decision making is lacking as it can really just guide you to better choices all right you won't always have time to run through the steps in game i get it especially when starting out but either way it's a solid framework for helping you decide all right guys so let's talk about a couple other ways that you can improve your decision making all right here we go first off you need to analyze pro players if you don't already i know pretty much everybody suggests this and that's because it's really that beneficial but you need to watch with the keen eye guys like it's not enough to only just look at what they're doing you need to ask yourself why they're doing it nearly every move has a purpose in high level play and if you see a pro rotating in a certain way or just deciding not to take a fight there's probably a good reason to it right and that's what you need to figure out so if you want to review pro players and actually learn from it yo <laughs> you need to fully assess the situations they're in so try to understand each decision's context through things like you know where the safe zone is and you know what the loadout situation is like that way you're not just blindly following their choices instead you're learning why they make them and that's the most important aspect to know okay 
And another way to make smarter choices is to avoid making emotionally charged decisions. Whew. I'm talking about those moments <laughs> where we forget about playing it by the books and, and we just let out our inner tilt, you know, and it, it just really gets the better of us, right? Which is not good practice. Just because some guy tags us once with an AR doesn't mean that we just suddenly have a vendetta against them and then we've got to go like fight them no matter what. Yeah, I know it's annoying. We're competitive. You know, some opponents can be really annoying with that, but you've got to think past that. Like try to be rational about your decision making and just really, you know, base it on information, not the temporary feelings that we have against random opponents. Opponents, okay and I'm not just making this up guys research has shown that relying on a systematic approach can really get you guys more accurate in situations and it also shows that anger leads to overconfidence which leads to bigger risk-taking you know whether or not these studies translate to Fortnite, I think they really really do but really guys like if you ever think that you're feeling a little too hot-headed while you're playing like I always say on my motivation show having every Friday at 12 o'clock PST or you know on my insta whenever I get a chance to talk to you guys I always say yo take a break maybe throw on one of my mentality videos whatever you could do and you really just start thinking with your brain and not your emotions in no time all right guys once again it's your motivation guys your friend the one only Keith Allen that's it for the tips on how you can improve your decision making in season four but before we close the video just know that you can't expect to use all the knowledge I gave you like right away it takes a lot of repetition you know to learn these things you know a lot of trying a lot of failing a lot of trying again so get out there don't be afraid to make mistakes okay and if you found this video helpful don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel so we can get more videos just like this one going out to you guys all right and uh, hey sharing is caring leave any tips you guys have on decision making that you know we might have missed and a uh, bunch of crunch army keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going